So today we're going to take a look at my dynamo lighting setup. So for those of you who don't know, dynamo lighting is, uh, it utilizes the mechanical force generated by you riding your bike. Uh, it usually comes in the form of either a roller dynamo, such as this one, uh, the AXA Duo, AXA Duo. I don't even know how to pronounce whether they go by the letters or not. Anyway, doesn't matter. This is a roller dynamo. It's got a thing here. It's usually got serrated teeth. They've also got ones with a little rubber head or you can buy replacement heads so that they can run on the rim. Uh, that works, you know, I, I would only trust that so much in wet weather, but so be it. And then it basically mounts to your front fork. You can buy, if you don't have a fork that's got this special mount, this is a Dutch fork, but if you don't have this special mount, you can buy accessory mounts from us uh, or little brackets. Uh, you can improvise one if you're so inclined. Uh, and it mounts to there and you position it so that it's riding on the sidewall of your tire but not digging into it. And you can just click it in. Now, the bike's not elevated enough, but as the wheel rolls, it turns that guy. And uh, the power turns a little generator inside there. Uh, and power runs through the wire up there and into your light. And then you get free light forever as long as you're not tired. You don't need to replace batteries. Nobody can undo this. Well, I guess they can technically undo this, but it takes a lot more work than something with a little rubber band that's holding it to your handlebars. And you can connect front light, and then you can either piggyback off the bottom of the duo here, because it's got two ports, or you can run it uh, in series here through your front light. I've got it running through my frame, along the rack here to the rear light. So I'm powering two lights at once while I ride. Uh, the front light here is a Simpson Brightly. It's 70 lux. It's sweet. You can see the street and you can see the light working even when you're riding under like street lights. Uh, and when you're in the dark, it makes a huge difference. You can see way in front of you. Uh, it's very well illuminated and it's phenomenal. The rear light here is the Pimento. So it's a very bright rear light as well. Brightness is very important to me. You don't need that. Like you honestly just need lower running lights for visibility if the motorists are looking for you in any case. And this one also comes with a built-in reflector that you can remove. So you can run either the basic reflector or you can run the little LED light. Now it's there on a dual bracket. It's also removable. So nice and customizable. You've got lots of options here. Very cool. Um, yeah, the other option is a hub dynamo, and usually that's a device here. Let me go find one in the shop here. Who's got a hub? We just moved a bunch of stuff. There we go. So this is, I believe this is a hub dynamo. Where's the wiring? <laughs> anyway, that's how it looks. And no matter how your wheel's turning, whether it's got a roller on it, or uh, got the dynamo going around the hub, uh, it generates a current, and that current powers your light. It does generate a little bit of resistance. You'll definitely feel it once you've got this connected. Uh, the hub you can't turn off. This one I like because you just, well, if you remember how to do it. There you go. Just fold it off. So if it's the daytime or you don't want to run your lights because you're, uh, you know, smuggling contraband or whatever, uh, you can just pop that guy off, and then when you're ready to ride, pow! You can even do that while you're riding if you're so inclined and uh, have the reach for it. So I've just flipped my bike here because uh, I don't have a flashlight. You know, if I had a battery powered light, I bet I could have used that. But I don't. I have dynamo. Haha. -ha. Uh, so this is the bottom. Uh, we've got two pairs of ports. That's for two separate wires. And um, your initial assumption, or at least my initial assumption, is hey, these are pairs. One side is, of each pair is positive and one side is neutral. Incorrect. One side of this is all positive all the time. One side of this is all neutral. So this is the positive side. You can see there's a tiny little plus sign there. And that is your neutral or ground. And that's the symbol for grounding. So positive, white wire, 
ground or neutral, black wire. On some lights it doesn't matter, but both of the lights that I'm using have a stand light, so that is relevant, because uh, if you run power the wrong way through a stand light, uh, because it uses a capacitor to charge, uh, the power just won't go anywhere. Uh, usually they've got a safety shut off. If they don't have a safety shut off, you're just going to burn out your light probably, uh, if you run it too hard, and have to buy a new light. And that's annoying and expensive. So, what you do is you take your wire, you strip it, you pull out this little plug, stick it in there, fold it over. I'll show you how to do that on the rear light, because I'm not going to pull this guy apart. Uh, but maybe it's, no, no, I'm, I'm just not going to. That's fine. Uh, and same thing for this side. And then it just runs right up to the light. I have left myself, I like changing my setup a lot. I don't think I actually needed to leave this much wire, but I just took whatever wire they gave me and uh, wrapped it all around. Uh, just so I got lots of room for playing around, uh, should I decide to change my setup for whatever reason. Uh, it's not taking up too much space, doesn't look too grody, uh, you know, it's not any more than the rest of the bike anyway. <laughs> and uh, that's about how you did for how you hook up a, a duo. Oh yes, the other important thing, uh, depending on the size of your tires, you're going to have to play around with the position of it as it rests up against the tire. I like beefier tires here. Uh, so. The way you adjust that is through a very complicated process known as just bending it. So you put it at resistance and then you just twist it. I'm not going to bend it because I've got it at the sweet spot. And you kind of will have to play around with it for a bit. If it's not bent enough, uh, you will feel way more resistance and you'll get tired. It's kind of like uh, running on a treadmill uh, with the resistance turned all the way up. Uh, you're going to get sweaty. That's fine if you like a good workout, but if you want to have a bit of a bit of an easier time, uh, just kind of play around with it and keep bending it out just a little bit at a time. If you bend it too far, the roller is not going to sit on the tire properly and it's going to slip, uh, especially in wet conditions, or it's not going to roll at all. In that case, just bend it back. Uh, this is pretty malleable. I wouldn't like, you know, go wild, but you've got a bit of room uh, to make minor adjustments. As long as you're careful, it should be fine. So down there is the terminal that we're going to put it in, and we've got this little insert here. Now one side is hot, one side is neutral. The round side is hot according to the manual, and the other side is neutral. With some of these rear lights, uh, that doesn't matter. Electricity is kind of like water, it goes through the wire like a tube. So if it's just, if there's no stand light involved, there's no circuitry or capacitors being charged, uh, it doesn't matter which way it goes in and which way it goes out, it's just generating a, a current. But with the stand light, it's important which one goes in where, uh, especially important if it's got overcurrent protection so that you don't destroy your light by charging it in the wrong direction. Uh, but hopefully we're gonna charge it in the right direction here. We'll find out. I haven't installed this particular model before, so this is learning experience for me too, but let's wire it up. And what we want to do here is we've got a wire. This is going to be real fun to focus on. So you've got a white side and a black side. The white side is going to be your hot or your positive, and the black side is going to be your neutral or your return. And what we're going to do is we're going to split it a little bit, uh, strip off a little bit here. Once that's stripped, it will get pushed in here and then folded over into these little channels on the back. And then we're going to push to insert and hopefully it's done properly because uh, this particular uh, model, I have been told, is a little bit tricky to get out once it's in there. So we'll make sure we do it correctly. This is how you internally route uh, wiring on a bike. So this is my Raleigh Matterhorn. The used to be the Rat Raleigh, now it's called the Cat Raleigh. Uh, it's got little ports here. There we are. And it's usually used for routing, uh, when it came to me, it was for routing the rear brake and rear derailleur through here. So it's a nice clean look. Uh, of course, I run a coaster brake on it these days, so I don't need that nonsense. Uh, so we're going to run some wiring through here. And the way I've done that is I've taken an old brake cable and fished it through. So you start at one end, uh, fire it through the little hole there. Uh, it helps if you kind of manually measure it out. And then 
when it gets here, you figure out about where the end is going to go and you shine a flashlight up in there and use either a hook or are just very, very careful. Whoop, there we go. Focus on this is great. <laughs> so you use a flashlight to look up in there uh, and then you use a little hook or you just carefully twist the wire around until you can poke it out. And once it's out, you bring it over here, tape your electrical wire on there. Uh, make sure it's secure because it's probably going to be a pain in the butt and you don't want that tape to come off halfway in there because now you got tape in your frame and also you got a fish again. And you just go zoop. Feed it in there. And then just pull at this end. Doo, doo, doo. Uh oh. <laughs> okay. So I salvaged it. What I did was I just kept pushing gently on the other end of the wire over here and same thing, teased it out, used a little hook tool here, this guy, and just teased it out and now we can pull it through and run it to our back light and we'll do it in a aesthetically pleasing way as much as we can. Uh, this is a pretty skinny rack but it'll just be probably wrapped around in a little bit of zip tying. And then we'll hook up the light and we'll look at that too. So we've stripped the wire and what you want to do, I can't do it with because I need both hands, but what you want to do is twist these little strands together. Uh, usually I go in a clockwise direction because that's generally how things are stranded and that will just make sure that it doesn't fray when you're pushing it through the connector. So here's the connector. Uh, the wire has been pushed through and split a little bit. You might need to play around with the length of the copper. Um, and that's been pushed through and then folded over like so. And when you insert it, uh, it will get pushed in to the connectors inside here. Here's hoping. Okay, so what we've done here is a little intricate, so I skipped a bunch of steps, but you'll be able to figure it out. So one, got these very cool cable clips. I've used that to secure it to the frame there and there. It's just a guide. It's a little bit classier than zip ties, easier to remove. Uh, it doesn't damage the paint. Not that uh, that's a concern on this bike. Then here I figured out where the positive and the negative wires go. So white stripe to white stripe, no stripe to no stripe. These are little automatically soldering uh, pieces of shrink wrap. These are very cool. Uh, you don't necessarily need it here, uh, but I'm doing it just in case. Uh, and what I've done here is the tines on my front light have got a little hole, so I've stuck the, the copper wire through that, folded it back, and twisted it around on itself. And then that one's done to show you, but this one here, the solder, I'm gonna have it sitting over there. So once I heat that up with a lighter, uh, that's going to automatically solder the connection there and make it secure. And I've got black shrink wrap that's going to go over everything that we will uh, just basically make it look nice and clean. And whatever excess wire there is will just get pushed back inside the frame there. And of course, the most important thing before you do any of this soldering or uh, shrink wrapping is to make sure it works. So we've got my AXA Duo here. This whole bike is disgusting. Sorry guys, I ride my bikes. Um, that's sitting on the tire there. And you want to give it a spin. So here's the front light. Yeah, it's got light, cool. Not very bright, but we're not going very fast. And here's the rear light. Whoa. There we go. So we got light, let there be light. So now we're going to do the soldering. I'm going to do that off camera because uh, I want to be cautious about that and not damage and mount anything. Um, and then we'll take it for a spin. So there's the finished product. Not the most beautiful thing in the world, but that's just kind of how shrimp wrap goes. You want to make sure that you've got enough cable to wrap around your frame. Probably tuck a little bit of that left in there. Uh, yeah, so I don't want it rubbing too much just so you don't chafe the wire. This frame's probably fine, but... Oop. Yeah. That's about it. Let's take it for a spin. 
All right, so here's the other cool feature of this. Just went for a little five minute ride to get home. So this is what's called a stand light. So just that little five minute ride, at a pretty good pace, uh, despite any sudden stops. Let's charge the capacitors in these, and they are going to continue to glow for the next five to 15 minutes. Uh, the longer you ride, the longer the charge stays up to a certain point. Uh, so that means if you are riding and then you stop at a stoplight, uh, in theory, you're visible, as long as people are looking for you. 